all sorts of goodies in this video in terms of adding some public holiday flags to your calendar table, and you probably need a calendar table in Power BI. There's connecting to a web page, there's some Power Query tricks, there's some merging, and at the end there's a little warning or a tip or a hack about how to get this to refresh properly. So stay tuned, let's go. Okay, I've got a file here with a pre-built calendar table. A little link will pop up to my video on your calendar table. You can actually download one from Access Analytic website for free. Uh, let me just show you. So here's the Access Analytic templates page. You scroll down, you go to Power Query Calendar. You can click on that. It takes you to this little SharePoint site. You've got some data sets here if you want to have a play about. We've got the Power Query calendars in Excel, Power BI, even the M code, little timetable if you're doing time-based analysis. I've got a little video for that. Okay, so what I want to do is use that, but also bring in the dates from this WA government website with all the public holidays listed. And then add a flag to my calendar table to say, hey, this is a public holiday. I can do some analysis then, filter out transactions on public holidays or number of working days type analysis, that sort of thing. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to go to my Power BI report. And here's my calendar table. So I'm going to connect to that website. So I'm going to go get data from web and put in the URL. So let me just go grab that, copy, minimize this back down, paste, click OK. And it's, you know, it's a public website, so there's no authorization or anything like that needed. And here we go, we can actually see the table. You know, it doesn't always show up, depends on how the website's built, but this one's a nice one. And I can right click, transform the data. So a few little power query tricks in here, okay? So I'll just call this uh, public holes. I don't actually want to load it, so I'm going to right click and disable the load. Okay, so let's tidy this up. Um, that change type step has happened before the headers have been promoted. So I'm pretty much sure I want to get rid of that. And use first row as headers to push up the heading rows. Brilliant. Okay, this is the uh, holiday. Right, so what do we got here? Um, we have double ups. Uh, Monday the 3rd of January is actually the public holiday because the 1st is a Saturday. So I need to tidy that up. I need to get rid of these little stars. Um, okay, so first thing I would do is like, right, let's try and extract everything after the plus. Let's see what happens. So go to the transform tab, extract text after delimiter. Okay. And if I simply put the ampersand in there, ah, everything else goes because it doesn't have an ampersand. So check out this little tip. Okay, I'm going to go back into my settings, advanced options. Okay, and I'll actually do it from the end of the input so it looks from the right backwards and then go OK. There we go. Pretty cool. Okay, um, but I want to do that for each column, ah, so that's not great. So what I'll do, look, it's different years in the columns. So look, what do you really wanna do, all right? What do you really wanna do is unpivot these. So right click, unpivot other columns. This is a nice column, these are years. They should be a single column. So right click, unpivot other columns, that's better. Okay, now I can come here and say extract text after the delimiter Put the little ampersand in there. Okay, from the end of the input, click OK. Beautiful. Um, that looks good. I want to get rid of these little stars. So I'm going to extract everything to the left of the star because somewhere down here, I think I spotted some double stars, did I? Or have they gone? Okay, well, I'll, have, I'll do that. So um, extract. Uh, text before delimiter, space, and then the star. Okay, there we go. All the stars have gone. That's looking good. Then I'll just merge these two together. Right click, 
merge columns. The order you click is the order they merge with a little space as a separator called date. All right. And see this, this is not good. This doesn't look quite right. Let's see if this date will work. Sometimes it fixes it. Okay, ooh, but there's something down here. So what's down here if I go back a step? Yeah, there's something not quite right here. So after I've um, extracted, see this one doesn't quite look right. There's some carriage return or some invisible character in there. So right click, transform, not trim, that gets rid of spaces, clean. Okay, that'll get rid of like non-printable characters like carriage returns and line breaks. Okay, insert step. Beautiful, that looks better. Okay, now we've done that. Then we do the merge, no warnings. Then we do the change type. Still getting errors. So why am I getting an error down here? Okay, there was something on here. Ah, there was no, there was no, this was a special day for the queen, the queen's funeral. So let's go back a few steps. See, there's a blanks in here. Well, I don't care about the blanks. So I'm going to filter out the blanks. Awesome. Let's just have a quick look. That's now looking, oh, still a bit of a warning. What's going on here? Christmas day. Oh, so there's triple, ah, no space. Okay, so what we'll do is go back here. And this is the reality of Power Query is trying this stuff. So I want to extract the text, go on this spot here before, and I won't put the space in there. Up in the formula bar, and now give that a go. Yay, finally we're there. Okay, awesome. We've got all our dates and our holidays. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to merge that on the side of my calendar table. And if you haven't seen this calendar table before, it's pretty handy. You know, you need a calendar table for doing analysis in Power BI. Um, you want to be presenting your data by month, by year, by day of the week, by financial year, by financial quarter, all those sorts of things that the built-in calendar just simply can't do. So I've got one here where you just simply type in a start date, 2021. Okay, that'll do, uh, let's start there. When do my public holidays start? I can't remember, 2022. Okay, so we'll start with 2021 in your calendar. If you wanna change it, you can just type into this box. Then you type in the years into the future. Well, I'd like to do three years into the future maybe. Okay, and that automatically generates the end date for the end of 2025. And actually I want to do two because I don't have public holidays for 2025. Cool, that makes the end date 2024. You've got month number for end of financial year. If you change that to a zero, you won't get the financial year columns. So in here, we've got a financial year and financial quarter, but if you change that year end, okay, change this, month number, that's a six for June, eight for August, three for March. Everything else gets worked out for you, awesome. Okay, so right at the end, I am going to merge in the public holidays. So here we go, merge queries uh, using the date and the public holidays date and merge them in. So there we've got the public holes and all I want from it is the holiday. Get rid of that use original column name. And here we'll have the public holidays. If I whiz down, there'll be the name of them somewhere in here. There we go. Labor Day, etc. Australia Day. And I just want a simple flag as well. So I'm just going to say add column, conditional column, simple little flag called uh, holiday flag. If the holiday equals null, then null or let's say zero, else one. Okay, so zero and one, click OK. And now I've got a nice holiday flag to use in my reporting. And I turn that into a whole number. Really useful for putting in filters and slices and things like this to or measures to toggle things off and on. So there we go, that's merging it in. Little tip, okay? When you publish this and you want to set up a refresh to get this to work properly, Back up in this web page here, the better option rather than web.browser contents is simply web.contents. 
Okay, I'm trying to get clarification on this, but this seems to work better. Okay, so all that still works. Okay, I'm ready to publish this. Um, this is certainly something you could do with data flows as well. Just set up a data flow with your, you know, this is only Austra uh, Western Australian public holidays, maybe on all of Australia. Maybe a data flow with a centralized calendar with those merge already happening could be a really good way of setting that up for the organization. Okay, so I'm gonna go um, publish and save. Okay, I think I've already published this once, so I'll probably have to save over the top of it. Yeah, replace. Okay, and then I'll just go to the actual page once it's opened up. So here's my data set. Let's try and refresh it. Okay, it's whirring away. Let's see if we get a failure or if we have to set anything up. No, that worked beautifully. Okay, but check out what happens if I hadn't changed it to web.contents. So I've just refreshed with web.browser contents. When I come up here to refresh this, I get a failure notice, okay? Please make sure your data gateway is installed. So you need a gateway for this web browser content, so it's a bit of a pain. So it seems that web.contents works, but I'm trying to get clarification on this. So please look at the notes below and I'll add a little link in description when I find out a right answer about this. Awesome, so I hope you find that useful. Um, I would recommend you change this holiday flag to uh, do not summarize because you never really need to add that flag up as such. Um, you should always write a measure anyway if you did need a count or a sum of those flags. Um, but there we go, useful little calendar. Hope you find it useful. Let people know about this channel and I will catch you in the next video.